Welcome everybody, welcome to Daddy Debates, brought to you by musicfootballfatherhood.com and this is the podcast for dads figuring out fatherhood. My name is Elliot and to my left I have... JJ. Sam. And Cali can't be with us today, but we have Alec back. For hey guys. Highly demanded after the last episode, I'm sure. <laughs> so welcome Alec. So today we're going to talk about something quite, heart light, quite light-hearted uh, and it's about dads and it's about the support that dads get or don't get. And the lead question is, how has MFF helped support you as fathers? You start with me. Start with right, you, cool. um, I'll be honest with you, I've always blogged and stuff, but I wasn't into this whole kind of meeting strangers kind of thing. I thought that's what weirdos did in car parks and got arrested for. It wasn't really like what I was into. <laughs> but becoming a dad for the first time, um, I was surprised at how... Um, Firstly, there was just a lack of a conversation about it in my language, uh, not in the terms of the kind of the technical stuff or like the NHS if they're ill or like looking after your kid. That stuff was fine, but more kind of the whole people who are sharing the experience that I'm having that we can just talk together about it without someone supposedly telling another person what they should or shouldn't be doing. And I think that's what I've enjoyed most about this forum it's allowed me to project what I feel is my truth and whether that helps people by either thinking, oh, that's really good or useful, or that guy's an idiot, I'm not doing that. And also just finding other people who have different thoughts, who are different stage of parenting, who are from different backgrounds that I wouldn't meet in everyday life and actually understand their perspectives because, you know, having 15 different opinions is basically like living 15 experiences without having to do that. And it just allows me to pick, cherry pick. But I think the most uh, the highlight for me has just been how fun it's been. And just when you get to a certain stage in life, later in life, you're a bit reluctant to make friends and forge relationships. You feel like, you know, I made all my friends when I was young and that's my crew. And then you'll get married and have kids and people move away. And then you get to that second stage in life and it's a bit awkward, like, especially as guys, like, you know, Oh, you know, I don't want to be beg friendly, I don't want to be weird and kind of thing. But here's like a forum where everyone's like, you know, everyone gets on and everyone's like minded and it helps create a, a, an atmosphere where you've got a positive vibe going on and everyone's helping each other out. And, and you realize there are other people out there like you who, who aren't judging you. There's, it's not like a group where we're just complaining, it's like positive energy. And yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it and I'm, I hope it continues and grows. Uh, yeah, everything JJ says, obviously, I think it was just interesting, I've written stuff for various things in education and it always kind of, only the last couple of years with, with my daughter and then my son come along, it's like, alright, my professional thing's one thing and then how does that impact on my personal life and a big choice to, to take shared parental leave and uh, see things very much through my wife's eyes and how her being the professional superstar that she is and how that's impact how women are caught in this cycle of all kinds of levels of judgment and things that go on there and then coming together with you guys and when elliot got in contact with me it was like all right but there's i was feeling sort of there was a lot about dad's side of parenting which was at once removed from the main argument you can go on to a mum's net you go on to other things like that but it's 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 the mum's opinion and rightly so because that's the primary source of why we're here is the mums but <laughs> but there's also the other story of it and it's like when i'm thinking about the impact society wise of of dads and the male role models and all those other kind of things there not that i necessarily am one but i have to be now so it's in and that's the discussions that we have both on the podcast and reading the articles on the website and seeing the Twitter discussions on Daddy Debates and just the chatting with you guys is like, well, actually just gives me lots of different perspectives and, and, and one, it's relaxing because it's suddenly you go, you offload a bit of stuff and I'm not always the best, even though I talk a lot now, I'm not always the best at communicating internally what exactly what I'm thinking about something. I do personally at home, but then my wife's also going through her own version of what we discuss in terms of what people think of her as mother and whatever. So it's like, right, we share our little bond in our little unit, but then there's an external kind of world out there as well, which we interact with and deal with. So what I found out is interesting to hear, and you guys are all different. You've all got different experiences, all got different backgrounds, all got different children ages, job wises, how you balance it with your partners and who's at home, who hasn't got a point. I mean, it's just interesting to hear all the different versions of what we do so when you read a book or you hear an expert saying this is the right way to do it, 
it confirms what I already thought. Actually, no, I, I want to put a middle finger up to that expert telling me there's one way to do it. There's not. There's 101 ways of doing it, but help people through it and and support people in whatever their choices might be. You talk about the truth, whatever feels comfortable with you. And as long as the kids are kind of like coming through it all right <laughs> and then unscathed physically and mentally, it's got to be a good thing to discuss it. And I think if there's men out there that don't want to talk about it, but they see us talking about football and all the other stuff we talk about, then always a, always a good thing, I think, for me. How about you, Alec? Yeah, it's a narrative for me that um, has long overdue, really, um, because I, I guess my circumstances are different than most. You know, I'm a, you know, my forties and I'm a widower. So, um, what my what I've had to do is go out and put myself out there anyway, because otherwise I'd have been isolated. My boys would have been isolated because predominantly childcare. And then that social life that people build up around uh, and their kids that they get <clears throat> um, uh, is done by the mothers, right? You know, you go into the school playground and all the little groups of mums and all the rest of it, and there's hardly any dads there. And, you know, I get some respite in that there's a group of school dads that play football together and so on. But no one talks about fatherhood. They might mention the odd thing, or you're going to this, or you can't make it because the parents' evening and whatever. But there isn't this type of discussion. And and I guess the, the, that group has gone down the, the traditional route of being the dads discussing kind of everything but parenting and fatherhood. So this group, you know, opens up and, and has kept open the possibility to have those types of conversations. Yes, to still have the other conversations and the debates around music. <laughs> and, uh, and some literates around um, football and so on but actually the biggest thing that we have in common is is fatherhood and the willingness and and and, and the desire to 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 not follow the, the 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 model that our parents generation before that said well you can't talk about that you don't want to talk about that it's not the thing that us as dads do well actually things have to change right we have to change the narrative for our kids coming through so that when they get to our ages and they're having their children, things have moved on. The conversation has moved on away from actually the lazy stuff that's out there in the media in regards to fatherhood. The, uh, almost just wanting to deliberately perpetuate the stereotype of the disengaged dad. He mm-hmm. doesn't know how to change a nappy, doesn't take his kids out, doesn't, you know, just works all hours, comes home, expects for his dinner to be on the table and all the rest of it. You know, we have to move away from that. And I feel that MFF is, is a huge part of, of, of that narrative. And, and you know, the, the hope is that, yeah, it absolutely continues to be that, uh, um, that role because the, there's, there's a huge, there's so much more that still needs to be done. And other groups are doing bits and bobs and, and all over the place. But I think, uh, um, you know, when I first spoke about uh, this with, with when I met Elliot, a couple of years back now, that's one of the things I'd said. And, like, you know, this has been long long overdue and, and, and I hope it becomes a thing that I think personally that that is out there because of my own particular personal experience. That's amazing. I think hearing you guys say this, it's, it's very surreal, like it's very weird because I guess like this whole thing, it started with just like a, a free WordPress.com template blog, basically. <laughs> Me just having a two, year, two month old daughter and thinking, what the hell is going on? Like my life is changing. And um, always thinking, yeah, that other dads will be in the same situation and you know I, I went on mum's net and and realized there wasn't any anyone else talking from our our point of view um and so to hear like you guys talk talk like this is actually it's, it's really touching man it's like amazing to think you have an idea and then it manifests and then people champion it and believe in it as much as you do so like i'm just really thankful that that mff has literally changed my life and in two ways the first way me as a dad in terms of all the things you've said you know, it's, it enlightened me it's given me another perspective around fatherhood it helps me when I've got um, when I'm questioning myself or just getting advice and you know, the daddy debates, getting different perspectives. The last podcast we did around the schools, you know, it just helps to open your mind about topics and issues. That's really powerful. But also just in terms of me professionally, like it has literally changed my life professionally completely. And some amazing things that two and a half years ago I would never have thought. Like some stupidly out of these world, out of this world things have happened, and it's just mad. But you know, I do believe that if you have an idea 
like if you believe in it enough, if it's innovative and you just work really, really hard, like there are so many things that need to be changed in the world. And I think we're doing something that is really valuable. And I just hope that it can continue to grow and more and more people can access like you know these conversations and stuff. I guess like what you were saying around meeting dads that are like, you know, like us, but then also different as well. Like how have you found it? One thing that's been really good for me is meeting and talking to people that I probably wouldn't have built a relationship with. Um, just because of, you know, you get older, you go to work, you come home, you just don't have the time, right? And also as you get older, I think you were saying you kind of get a bit close to new relationships and you think, I'm like, not going to make new friends now. You don't really want to. But what MFF has really done for me is made, made like new friends and new relationships, which is really cool, with people that I wouldn't necessarily have connected with. So how have you found that, like, conversating with people who are, share your values, but at the same time are different to you as well? Yeah, I, I, I think it's good, at, you know, um, I guess I'm not trying to bring it around to this, but I am in some ways. So we talk about our, our lived experiences, and that's great because those are true to us and, and are meaningful and, and no one can take away from what we've been through. But the reality is that when we tend to give opinions on things, we do give it from our own perspective. So... Um, how else are you going to understand what everyone else is going through if you don't get those mm. diverse inputs? You know, we talk about what's happening happening currently with our political system, and it's being driven by a group of guys who have no concept whatsoever what it's like for the real man in the street and what they're dealing with and their day-to-day challenges and so on and so forth. So it's good to have these different perspectives on fatherhood and parenting and take ideas or, or think, oh, Thank God it's not just me who's dealing with this ish at, at this particular point in time. People further down the line, uh, um, people you know who you might be able to help because they're a bit further but behind you in terms of the fatherhood journey because their their kids are younger. Um, and so you know we, we keep banging on about diversity and inclusion and all the rest of it these days, and it's it's a big buzzword. But I think the reality of MFF is that. It wouldn't be what it is. I personally don't think it would be what it is without that diversity of input. I I, I just can't see how it would be the same. It it, it can't because you put a group of people in the the room who've come from the same background with the same sort of experience, you're just going to get the same set of opinions and all the rest of it, right? So, yeah, it serves a purpose. But after that, kind of, where where do you go from that? And and again, something like I said to you earlier, when we we first had that, that first phone call, um, I remember it. I was in my dining room, sat at the table, and um, one of the things I said is that, uh, um, again, being in my personal circumstances, the, my immediate thing was to go onto the mum's nets and all those other things. And you know, there's a gazillion and one mum blogs out there and Insta mums and all the rest. Of it. I'm just like, oh, wow, really? I, I, so then I started finding some dad ones, but they were all the same. They were all exactly the same. Yeah. Like, okay, so so what? <laughs> You know, what are, what are you talking about that's any different than the mums net and the insta mums and all those things? You're talking about exactly the same sets of things. So I'm not really learning any. So I just kind of just say, okay, you know, unfollowed, 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 unfollowed because it was my feed was getting filled up, filled up with the same set of, of, of things. So um, yeah, we need more. We need it's, more. It's, I mean, that's the thing about it. I think there's two things that I sort of, I think I, when I first came to that, railed against a little bit one was the the increasingly sense that even though i was partaking in in the same sort of parenting role as the majority of women who have kids in the country do i wasn't part of it that was the first thing it was yeah. the, the, from the health system to going down the park to the entity yeah, groups yeah. you're one remove and it's a it, 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 don't pity me on that as there's not a thing it's more a case of like well Chris, just that's fine is. and that's what yeah. it is and i'm okay with that because i've got uh, other ways in which i but it was just like okay but if i'm thinking that and i'm pretty much okay with how I am in, in the way of the world. There's, that's not every dad's like that. And I'm a little bit older than most people. And we had kids who were a little bit older. So my general sense was I was I was enjoying what we, was happening to us. But I'm thinking, would I have been so comfortable if I was 22, 23, 24, having kids, not being as comfortable in my job, knowing what a profession was, all these other things that made me comfortable in oh, a arrival of a kid yeah. and a little bit more secure in the madness that follows. Um, so you, and then being isolated again, because I was a dad. And there's an ego thing and doing a woman's job and all those kind of things that stereotypes you talked about. Second thing was, is, is, is kind of outside of that. It's like, well, some of the people talking about parenting, well, 
it's, it's, it's like when you read um, the mum blogs that are out there. there are, there's two modes. One, you're the perfect one. Always smile and everything's perfect. Everything's absolutely great. The, the, all the ideas, nothing goes wrong. All you, as a mum, you've got to go down the route of, a, oh, I'm telling them how I, I drank Prosecco at 12 o'clock in the morning and that was it. You've, uh, there's only two stereotypes that can exist because they're the only two people want to listen to. Yeah. With dads, it's the uber perfect. I'm the great dad. It's like, there's not, I don't want to be told how great you are. And I'm ever so maybe, maybe that's just social media. I just want to talk about what happens, yeah. not to be forced that I'm the influencing this because I sold this product and that's the best thing you should buy. And why didn't you have it? I mean, I can do that. I can work the internet. Uh, I always just want to talk to people about, oh, you remember? just because it's conversation. And it's, it's, there's, a, there's a thing from a film called Bill Hunting. I know it's a cheesy film and everything, but there's a, the, 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 but the, the, the bit where, there's a bit where Robin Williams sits on the bench with Matt Damon and Matt Damon ripped him apart because he, he looked at a painting on his wall and told him he was this horrible person that, that lost his wife. And there's a scene where Robin Williams just sits down and says, well, yeah, I, 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 I thought about you last night, rolled over, went to sleep and didn't think about you again. And I realized there's one thing, right? You can tell me, there's nothing I can know about you that I can't read from a book. But if you want to talk, then I'm in. Yeah. And that's what I think, regardless of where we come from and how we didn't know each other before the podcast and all that kind of thing, we can talk about it. it, makes, it there's something there. There's a, there's a discussion thing there. But that's what I get. I'm lucky I get it from my job as a teacher. You talk to young people and you actually talk to them. You find out a whole bunch of things that are stopping or starting them doing what they want to do. And I guess the same thing for us as fathers. You stop and start by yeah. having a conversation. I don't know what the complex thing that you journey, you went on, I take these words like journey and truth and stuff. I don't know where you came from, what you did to get here, but I'll talk about what's happening now and how's it going and, and go from there. I think that's what's been lovely and the, the, the Twitter and the internet yeah. allows more and more people to go, this is what I'm doing at the moment, this is what's happening to me. Yeah. Uh, the, the question marks there yeah. and people lob in and it's been great and there's a whole lot of less judgment than... Yeah. I've seen elsewhere in the parenting world, yeah, which absolutely. is sadly female dominated. Yeah. Bigger than that, last thing I said, if this doesn't have some impact on gender pay gap, I don't know what we're doing because that's the biggest thing. Why is it always automatically women are going to do this? Women are doing the parenting, so your pay stays down here. Mm -hmm. Men, you're flying off there. You don't have to worry about it because you have to financially continue doing what you're doing. If we're going to do that, if we're going to properly alter yeah. how the world works yeah. in a lot of ways, I like the starting point.